Welcome to the How Much Silver is in My Dime Lab. We're supposed to have dimes from before 1965. In 1965 or afterwards, the uh, dimes were made out of zinc and copper. But before, they were silver and copper. And there's an interesting reaction with silver where aqueous silver ions and sodium chloride are going to make uh, solid so, uh, silver chloride. And so we get to dissolve this in nitric acid and then retrieve the silver ions and prove the percent of the silver in the alloy of our dime. All right, so obviously the bad news is we don't have these dimes. The good news is we have silver and we have copper. And on day one, you masked your silver and copper. And then I came into the lab for you and I added 10. 0 0.00 milliliters of 6 molar nitric acid. Please add that to your notes. I'll say it again. 10.00 milliliters of 6.0 molar nitric acid. What you're seeing here is a redox reaction where both the copper and the silver, solid neutral copper and solid neutral silver, are losing their electrons. And we're producing nitrogen uh, monoxide gas, which is then going to react with the air immediately and make nitrogen dioxide gas. Well, after about 20 minutes, we'll get this blue solution. And our blue solution is blue because of copper and we're, we have aqueous silver and aqueous copper ions here in solution. This is what you're going to start with on your first day in the lab. The first thing you, do, you need to do today once you have your aqueous solution of silver and copper ions is to measure out the sodium chloride you need. The lab instructs you to assume that the total mass is all silver, but uh, you know your silver mass. You measured that on day one. So if you want to assume your entire mass is silver, go ahead and do that. Do the stoichiometry to calculate your sodium chloride mass you need. And, but if you want to go ahead and, and use your silver to do that, your silver, actual silver mass, go ahead. Um, the... Uh, lab also instructs you to double that mass. Whatever mass of sodium chloride that you calculate stoichiometrically, double it. Add that to 25 milliliters of deionized water in your graduated cylinder. What I would like to do, or what I'd like you to do, is add the salt to this and then QS, which means once the salt is in here, add just enough water to get your 25. 0 0.0 milliliters. Here's the sodium chloride that I'm supposed to have for my mass of silver times 2 for the sodium chloride mass. Double it because uh, we want to make sure that we precipitate all of the silver. We don't want to leave any silver behind. And so we can make sure that we push this reaction all the way to products by using excess um, sodium chloride. All right, so put the salt in first and then add your water. You all have stirring rods at your benches, so use your stirring rod to get the table salt to dissolve. This might just take a minute. Now my salt's completely dissolved and I've got a dropper and I'm going to use that dropper to add the sodium chloride to my aqueous copper and silver ions. I'm going to make observations as I do this and I'm going to do it nice and slowly. I'm going to try not to agitate this or stir this too much. Um, maybe swirling is good, but I'm, I'm going to try not to stir it too much because I don't want the particles to be too small. So I'm filling my pipette right now and Nice. Looks like the silver chloride forms immediately and then settles.
keep doing this until you've added all 25 milliliters of your sodium chloride solution. Once you've added all your sodium chloride, you should have a milky looking bluish substance. It, it's a colloid you've made and some of the silver chloride is suspended, really small suspended particles and some of them are crystallizing uh, on the bottom or have settled out. I want to point out the apparatus you're going to be using today is one you didn't use in Gen Chem. Uh, so this may entirely be new to you. You're going to use a filter crucible and this filter crucible you can see it is, has uh, little tiny holes on the bottom and we're going to put a filter in here. Alright, so this is called a Gooch Crucible, uh, G-O-O-C-H. And the Walters adapter is going to fit here on this filter flask. And there's an aspirator on your faucet that's going to run water and create a relatively low pressure environment here. That will allow the atmosphere to push in to expedite your filtration. You're going to capture your silver chloride in here in your Gooch filter crucible uh, in filter paper, special uh, tiny little filter paper. Let me show you how all of this is going to work. But you might want to take a picture of this or copy it down. Here's your actual apparatus. I put a safety ring on here because these hoses are really stiff and they might knock it over. So uh, here's your filter flask. This is your Walters adapter. Here's your Gooch filter crucible. And that fits in the top of your Walters adapter. All right, what I want you to make a note of here for safety is you don't have to push the gooch into the Walters adapter very hard. In fact, if you do, you're going to break the glass funnel that's in here. You can see the bottom of the glass funnel protruding out of the bottom of the Walters adapter. So let gravity do its work and then give it a tiny little twist. And that is snug enough for an airtight seal. The next thing is to run your water. To create a vacuum, run cold water and it doesn't have to be very much. Um, first thing, oh yeah, make sure that your sink is completely clean because running the water all for, you know, for, during your filtering process, if there's anything down here in the drain, then it might clog and back up and overflow. So the water, can be really gentle like that and that's enough pressure to pull a pressure gradient through your filter flask and to expedite the filtering of your silver chloride. These are your Gooch filters that you're going to be using today and they're really tiny and they're really light and I don't have a lot of them so uh, only use one. Hopefully you won't make any mistakes today. But they're really light so you need to get their mass before and after. The silver chloride will be in the filter and on the filter, and so you need the pre-silver chloride mass. And so just get the mass of your filter before you filter. You won't be putting your Gooch crucible in the drying oven uh, because you're Gooch crucible, we don't have enough of them. So you're going to be using your crucible to filter your sulfur chloride out with this and then you're going to pull this out with tweezers and put this in the drying oven and tomorrow once it's all dried we'll give it away. Let's see what the difference is and get the mass of our silver chloride. To seat your filter, to make sure that there's a nice seal around your filter, I want you to turn your water on which you can hear in the background. And, and then go ahead and get some more deionized water and use your pipette 
after you've masked your filter, make sure this you know the mass of this before you get it wet. And put water around your filter. That's gonna form a nice seal with the with the gooch. And you can see that the filter's working because some of the water was pulled with that vacuum into the filter flask. The lab instructs you to take six molar nitric acid and to dilute that to make an acid wash. And the purpose is to make sure that your silver chloride doesn't uh, peptize. Uh, peptization is when uh, the formation of super tiny particles occurs that will pass perhaps around or through this filter. You don't need to make this acid. Dr. Moody made the acid wash for you. So what you're gonna be doing is transferring your silver chloride solution. And of course there's copper uh, nitrate in here too, or copper chloride as well. And uh, you'll be transferring this into your gooch and making sure you get all of your particles with your acid wash bottle. All right, it should filter pretty quickly. Pour the rest and then wash out the rest of that silver chloride with your wash bottle into the gooch crucible. All right, here's some caution. You may experience a backfilling of water in your hose. If that happens, turn your water pressure up a little bit and then raise up your filter flask so the water will drain down the hose through the aspirator that's in your faucet. You may have to turn up the water pressure significantly for that, but I want you to notice that I've got my silver chloride in here. I'm gonna use my acid wash one last time to get all of the silver chloride off of the walls of the gooch and then down into the filter that's at the bottom. Then I'm gonna let it run for about another minute or two to let the silver chloride at the bottom dry. Here's another pro tip to keep the water from backfilling your hose when you turn your faucet off. Take your gooch out first of your Walter adapter. Now pressure is free, freely flowing here. And then when you turn your water off, the hose won't fill with water. All right, now you're ready to prepare this for the drying oven. We can dry it out and weigh it the next day. In a perfect world, you would have already masked your dry crucible, and we would just put this in the drying oven and we'd weigh it the next day and you know calculate the difference. It'd be super easy. Uh, but it's not a perfect world because we don't have uh, 45 Gooch crucibles. But what we do have enough of are tiny little weigh boats. So what I want you to try to do is get your filter and all of your sodium chloride into this weigh boat. But you're going to have to label it, disregard any writing that's already on it. In fact, if you want to scribble that out, that's fine. Put your special mark on it and then zero the scale because you want to know the mass of the weigh boat um, by itself. You've got to record that and I recommend writing that on the weigh boat. So you get your mass of your weigh boat looks pretty reliable and then take all of this silver chloride with your tweezers and it's okay to use that acid wash water to get all of the silver chloride into that weigh boat. Now, you're gonna know your filter mass, you're gonna know your weigh boat mass, and then all we'll have to do is subtract those from the total mass the next day, once everything's dry, and that will be the mass of our silver chloride. Here's another pro tip. I've given you guys these micro spatulas 
to help you pry the filter paper and the silver chloride out of the bottom of the gooch so that you can dump that into your way boat. And then whatever silver chloride's still in there, see if you can wash that out and off of your micro pipette into the, um, into the way boat. All of that's gonna dry in the oven anyways. And I'll set the temperature low enough so we don't melt our way boats. I may have just confused something. So I've, I've put all of the silver chloride into my way boat. Now, I, I know you saw me put the silver chloride into the way boat on the scale, but at that point, that mass is useless because our filter paper is wet. And so we just need this scale uh, on the first day to measure the mass of our dry filter paper, to measure the mass of our way boat, and then whatever we put into that way boat, we're gonna put into the drying oven at a nice low temperature that won't melt the plastic, and we'll weigh that the very next day. The last steps in the lab are just clean up. The things you've dirtied so far are your, your beaker, your gooch crucible, and you've got some waste product here. That's your copper your copper ions in your filter flask. So this needs to be poured into the waste bin in the middle of the room. And these need to be washed. This guy can get put on the drying rack. And this needs to be put back into the Walter adapter for the next class. Here's the drying oven. And on the very last day of the lab, you're gonna come in here, grab your way boat that has your filter paper and your silver chloride in it and find a total mass of that on our balances and subtract the way boat mass and the filter mass to get your silver chloride mass. You've got all the information that you need to complete the submission form. All right, good luck. Thank you.